Well, another frustrating one for the Bruins as they lose on the road against Villanova, 65-56. Let's react to it in the car here on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, yes, we do podcasts from anywhere, even if it requires being in the car. So welcome to Locked On UCLA. Zach Anderson, Yox, I'm with you guys. The Bruins drop a tough road decision against Villanova in the Wells Fargo Center, a game where UCLA led at the half, struggled for the majority of the first half, but a late run, strong defensive presence, two good miniature runs, and the closing part of the opening half put the Bruins up 29-25. to Back and forth they went in the second half. UCLA a slim lead. Back and forth they went. But it was the crucial part of this game. 45-41, about six and a half minutes left. UCLA commits a foul. A missed free throw after the first made free throw by Villanova. Two Bruins crash into each other. Ball pops up, hits a Wildcats hands. Open corner three, tie ball game. And then UCLA never really had a grasp on the game after that because Villanova ran away with the lead for a minute. UCLA was able to get back in it here on this immediate reaction of the UCLA versus Nova game. They're getting back in it, down four, just under a minute remaining. Air ball with the shot clock winding down, but then TJ Bamba, that name's familiar, right? Because he's from Wazoo, gets the rebound, flips it midair, reverse layup at the buzzer, puts Villanova up six, and it was just one of those games where key rebounds were just not grabbed at the right moment, right? UCLA, with their two big lineup, could not get the job done. And more importantly, Villanova is playing without one of their key guards in Justin Moore, who averages 13 points per game. Now, I think UCLA, while we won't understand how much Bedeke's injury means in terms of what he's going to mean to this lineup moving forward, they were without Bedeke. In this game, we saw some good and a little bit of bad from Adai Mata. Bona continues to rack up foul trouble, but just the sheer physicality of this game, a little bit of the disparity of the free throws, Nova giving a bit more free throws. Not crazy amount, but more than UCLA. And overall, the Bruins struggled to get a half-court offense going. They just absolutely struggled. Three-point numbers were better than the season average, but right on cue to what Villanova gives up at the end when they're hoisting up threes, the Bruins ended up falling into a bit of a Nova trap. I thought they had this game. I thought the Bruins absolutely did. They needed it in order to get a significant road victory, help bolster that resume, because at the moment, UCLA 5-3. and three. No true big win this year. They've beaten all main majors at home, a D2 in the Maui Jim Maui Invitational, which necessarily won't be held against them, but in the end, they haven't had any big wins, and there are three opportunities to get one away from home that could somewhat improve the resume. It, it just is not there. UCLA is going to have another opportunity against Ohio State. They get Maryland later. And then with Arizona tops in the country, that's going to be a big game later. The Pac-12 will give the Bruins some opportunities to get some wins, but the things that are glaring for UCLA, one in this game, Nova took care of the basketball. They came in as a team that only turned it over about 10 times per game, a little less though in this one. UCLA didn't overall throw the ball away, but in a game where despite Nova not making a lot of shots efficiently, the Bruins were unable to force turnovers where it was very good defense. This was a game UCLA needed, UCLA needed to turn their defense into offense and get some easy layups at the cup. That didn't happen. I know there's a sequence where they missed a layup, and had a chance to take the lead, ended up taking the layup. Just a few chances where the ball rolled off the rim. Lazar Stefanovic going, what, 7 of 19 off the top of my head. It was it was just a frustrating performance for the Bruins where they just could not get a bucket to fall. I, I continue to like Will McClendon's improvement shooting the basketball. Alon Fible at some point is going to earn some more minutes. I, I would like to see a little bit more of that. I thought Dixon for Villanova would do a little bit more offensively for the Wildcats. He did not, but it was his 10 rebounds. Burton's, I believe, 10 rebounds. Just key rebounds 
where Nova was grabbing boards where the Bruins just couldn't do so. Mara just does not have the boxing out ability the Bruins need him to have for this team to be good. Because in a game where Nova was not making shots, the Bruins were capitalizing on minimal opportunities, the Bruins need more. And I know, I thought, honestly, Mara played a little bit better than what I had seen in limited duty earlier in the season, right? Yet, I do need more. The Bruins need more. Mick Cronin needs more to get this team to where it needs to be, right? They UCLA did not go deep in this game. They did not go deep into their bench in a game where Cronin was trying so desperately to win his first game back in a few weeks, right? Because he missed the Riverside game a couple weeks since the Hawaii game. So the team's still adjusting to the flow. Bedeke was in. They're getting used to that. Then he's gone. Then Cronin's gone. So a little... Jekyll and Hyde, a little up and down where they're so close to beating the number four or 10 team in the country, depending on where you're looking at Gonzaga, where you're looking at Marquette. And then in a true road game where Mick Cronin talks about how 75, more than 70% of the games played in college basketball were won by the home team. Bruins had an opportunity, golden opportunity to win this one. It wouldn't have been pretty, but I think that necess- that played into UCLA's favor for this game. That absolutely did. Now, we can go a little bit more in depth in the next full Locked On UCLA episode, but it just leaves me frustrated. I get so intense watching these games and then then knowing what I'm going to have to do, talk about it after. It just builds the frustration. This team's frustrating in the best and worst ways. I'm not really sure how to verbalize that. You're just frustrated. You're not mad because you know like they're going to be better at the end of the year. Except... The fact that they're so close to getting big three times, they're close to getting all three losses. They've been competitive and could have won three, should have maybe won two of them. Uh, and all of a sudden, maybe this is a different outlook for the season. That's why they're a young team. It's going to struggle. They're going to struggle in the early parts of the season. And it's up to the building and the, the build up and coaching ability from Cronin and his staff for UCLA to develop a team that's competitive in the rest of the non-conference, hopefully does well in the conference play, to set themselves up to get in the tournament, and that's all UCLA needs to do this year. Get in the tournament, and they're dangerous. They would not be anybody's first choice to face as an overrated, underrated, top-tier conference team. The defense the Bruins can play under Mick Cronin is dangerous and the ability for Mac when he gets going to score buckets when they can hit some clutch threes. I think this team has an ability to be has a capability to be like that team two years ago to go on a run. They just got to get in, develop. Everybody's got to find their role heading into the NCAA tournament, heading into Pac-12 play, heading into all these things. It's one rung up the ladder, right? Now they're learning how to win close games, beat teams in true road games. And that's just not what has happened today. Rebounding, an emphasis, rebounding, rebounding, rebounding. And the offense just was not there, was not there tonight for UCLA. And a nine-point loss, again, that was much closer than that in this one. of The Bruins slightly crumbled down the stretch. Not a collapse, just could not get the stops at the right time, the rebound at the right point, or get a bucket when they could stop a 7-0 spurt where Villanova had a guy hit two miracle threes, and I believe he averages like five points a game and hit him from 50 feet. That's not going to happen every game, but that is some March-like magic in an early December game. All right? That's not going to happen every game. So that's the difference between winning and losing this game. Two hoisted threes that were the tie-breaking parts of this game, but you got to be able to make sure that doesn't happen again twice in a few minutes stints where Nova wasn't making field goals for six minutes at a time. This episode's brought to you by FanDuel because on FanDuel Sportsbook, the, the offers stay hot even as the weather gets much cooler here in the NFL in the later part of the season, winter, everything in between. Hey, check it out with FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get 150 bucks if your team wins in bonus bets. 150 bucks, any $5 money line bet. Check it out at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Well, we're in the dark. I'm a little sad. Everything's going crazy here for UCLA. And hey, let, let's get crazy. I'll talk more. We'll be back home. We'll get crazy. This is my reaction episode in the dark, in the car, 
on the road like the Bruins, and we'll get a dub at some point. They're going to build. Let's go, Bruins. Hey, clap time, baby. Even if you can't see me. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A U C L A. UCLA, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.